Hey guys, in reviewing the muscle physiology, I think it would be very helpful to study together and summarize this slide um, for the excitation contraction coupling. I like this slide because it summarizes lots of concepts. So it summarizes over here the neuromuscular, ju neuromuscular junctions and the events that take place and then the action potential and how it spreads over first the cell membrane of the muscle cell which is the sarco sarcolemma and then it spreads over the t-tubules and from the t-tubules it will excite the uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum and the sarcoplasmic reticulum will release the calcium and calcium will lead to the contraction so this this is a really good slide that if you review it and study it well it summarizes so many concepts that we went over when it came to muscle physiology so let's start with this event over here which is um, the events that are happening at the neuromuscular junction as we know the signal is coming um, through a motor neuron and the axon here is carrying the action potential all the way to the axon terminal whereas we studied before we have um, voltage gated calcium channels that would be situated here and the, the influx of calcium into the inside of those axon terminal will cause series of events causing the motor proteins to start squeezing those vesicles against the cell membrane and resulting in the exocytosis of the neurotransmitter, which is in this case acetylcholine, right? Acetylcholine, as we studied also, will bind to a receptor. That is your acetylcholine receptor. Well, the acetylcholine receptor uh, is also uh, a, a chemically, chemically gated channel. So it will allow sodium and potassium to come in. And you will wonder, well, how come sodium and potassium come in at the same time? Well, they don't come in at the same time. If you remember from chapter four, we agreed that um, sodium has a, a, a much higher likelihood for influx than the potassium has for outflux. Uh, sodium, there are two forces pushing the sodium into the cell, the concentration gradient and the charge. It's negative on the inside and the sodium would like to go. Potassium, on the other hand, as we also studied, has a slightly harder time to for outflux because the negative charge, especially in the muscle, where the resting membrane potential is equal to the equilibrium potential, 90 minus uh, 90 uh, millivolts, and therefore, potassium doesn't really want to leave. And furthermore, the potassium has been leaving all along because of the, the permeability for the potassium is there, whereas the sodium has no permeability whatsoever. Okay, so we agreed to this that the, um, the acetylcholine will bind to the acetylcholine receptors. And that will open up, remember, a protein binding to a substance will result in opening the channel. And when you open the channel, uh, in this case, or closing the channel in some events, but in this case, we're opening the channels. And when you open the channels, then the sodium will come in. Later on, potassium will go out, but initially you have sodium coming in. That will cause graded potential here, which will be transmitted across the sarcolemma or the cell membrane of the muscle cell as action potential. We got that. The action potential wave will travel using voltage-gated sodium channels and voltage-gated potassium channels for the repolarization. The same thing we went over in, channel, in, in chapter 4 when we talked about that in chapter 5. So, okay. So now we have the depolarization events taking place. They will continue as we described into the T-tubules, which are invaginations. They are extensions of the cell membrane. So therefore the action potential is just going to continue over the T-tubules or the transverse tubules. We agreed that over here we have, um, we have in addition 
to the voltage gated sodium channels voltage gated potassium channels we have proteins that will react differently to the change in the voltage and we call these proteins dihydropyridine dihydropyridine and we agreed that dihydropyridine once they are stimulated by that current by that depolarization wave they will start poking into other proteins and those proteins are present here in what we call the terminal cisternae terminal cisternae or the terminal sac and that of the sarcoplasmic reticulum that particular protein here is called the ryanidine receptor so the dihydropyridine is opening the ryanidine receptor and the ryanidine receptor now is leaking calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum from the terminal cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the cytoplasm we got that well that calcium is going to bind a certain protein that is a regulatory protein that is present on the thin filaments remember that protein it's called troponin and when it binds to the troponin again to the silly rule the troponin is going to change the shape and by changing the shape it's going to pull the tropomyosin away therefore exposing the actin filament to the myosin heads now they can bind they can latch we call that the cross bridge formation that is the first step for the cross bridge formation the myosin heads needs to be phosphorylated therefore they have the phosphate group attached to them they are phosphomyosin they attach and because they attach uh, they uh, will will start to undergo conformational changes right because now the myosin heads are binding to actin and that will result in the fact that the myosin heads are going to start bending forward and they will utilize the energy that was initially formed by splitting the atp when you split the atp you create phosphomyosin but you also got some energy and that energy will be helpful to be transferred as kinetic energy with the change of the shape of the myosin as we see here we agreed that this chain this 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 change in the shape of the myosin is go, is going to perform what is known as the power stroke in which the myosin and the actin are coupled together and the bending of the myosin forward will pull the actin filaments towards the m line towards the center of the sarcomere and therefore if you remember the h zone it's going to narrow because now you are sliding the actin filaments towards the center we agreed to this right so at this point because the myosin has changed its shape now it has less affinity for the phosphate the phosphate at this point is going to drop out leaving the atp binding site available for a fresh atp to come and bind to the myosin head now the atp as it binds to the myosin head it will make atp myosin complex that complex has no affinity to the actin and therefore it will let go of the actin and resulting in the uncoupling between the myosin and the actin these events will take only a millisecond and it will continue to cycle over and over and over so don't expect a muscle contraction will have only a single uh, myosin actin interaction no they couple they uncouple they couple and uncouple at the same time other myosin heads are coupling and uncoupling and that will continue as long as the calcium is inside the cytoplasm so the contraction is lasting inside the muscle cell as long as the calcium is in and as long as you have enough energy for the atp phosphate atp phosphate to happen the phosphomyosin and so but once you stop sending the signal through a motor neuron of course the neurotransmitters will be gone they are will be destroyed or uptaken they don't last here for too long because the stimulus is gone you don't need it anymore so there is no more fresh acetylcholine being exocytosed by the axon terminal that will result in termination of the depolarization wave that will result in the fact that the ryanidine receptor will stop leaking calcium into the cytoplasm in the meanwhile 
you have calcium pumps that will take that cytosolic calcium, the free calcium, and push it back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Once you don't have enough calcium inside the cell, the coupling or the cross bridge formation between the myosin and the actin filaments is not possible. Making sense? So two things here we need to pay, three things we need to pay attention. The events that happen here at the neuromuscular junctions, which result in the release of the neurotransmitter and the binding and the activation of the acetylcholine receptor, which we understand that it induces this graded potential, which will be translated into action potential. That's one. A second event, which is here, takes place at the triad which is T-tubule and two sarcoplasmic reticulum. Both sides, the depolarization wave will cause the activation of the dihydropyridine that will activate the ryanidine receptor that will start to have calcium influx into the cell. Calcium, as it comes in, it will bind to the troponin, and we know that this will cause the cross bridge formation. We also know that ATP plays important role. The phosphorylation of the myosin here is because of the breaking of the ATP into phosphate and the ADP. The phosphomyosin is going to bind, and the binding is causing the change in the shape, and the change in the shape will cause the phosphate to fall off. And as the phosphate falls off, the ATP binds to the myosin head, causing the uncoupling between the myosin head and the actin filaments. So I, I really like this slide because it summarizes so many different concepts that we went over in the muscle physiology. So I hope summarizing it for you here on this um, um, very short uh, video uh, can help you reviewing this material. And uh, I hope this will be um, of use while you are uh, reviewing um, this chapter for um, the exam or just for understanding the, the muscle physiology as we described it in the lecture. All right, have a great day.